people to help in extending that squeeze in the house, but that's not all. It is the government's plan to move forward uh, with the request of the Parliament for this extension is the of the commission. Harper would not specify what Lindsay an expansion Arthur. would entail. It could mean an increase in the number of soldiers who are advising and assisting Kurdish fighters in northern Iraq. It could mean stretching a geographical area in which Canada is helping Iraq, or even beyond Iraq into Syria. It could broaden what troops are allowed to do as part of the fight against ISIS. Neither opposition party voted in favor of the current mission. In fact, the NDP says the government has misled Canadians on its nature. They argue it has turned into a combat mission, with our troops taking fire on the front line. Karina Roman, CBC News, Ottawa. The Prime Minister of Tunisia says two or three attackers remain at large following a mass shooting at a major museum in the capital, Tunis. He says 21 people were killed, 17 of them tourists from Poland, Italy, Germany, and Spain. Hiding Byrne he is with the Guardian newspaper. I've been told by police forces here that all the hostages have now been freed. I watched a very packed tourist bus full of hostages, uh, full of Four hostages, at least hostages in the evacuated. The two attackers have been killed, the police say. They were killed inside the museum and the bodies presumably are inside the museum. People are very shocked. They're shocked that the foreigners still feel to change to enjoy their country. I'm standing uh, at the entrance to the museum and there's a, there's a big bedroom of local people standing around from the roof from this um, there's a working class area, residential area near the museum. And I would say people are just in shock. That is Eileen Byrne with the Guardian newspaper in Tunis, Tunisia. It's a result that most analysts and pollsters did not expect. Benjamin Netanyahu and his right-wing Likud party have won the Israeli general election. In Jerusalem, here is the CBC's Derek Stoffel. This was an election campaign that was largely focused on Netanyahu himself, the opposition hammering away at him, focusing on spending scandals, saying he ignored key pocketbook issues here, but he was able to mount a comeback by launching a very negative final week of campaigning. Yesterday, as people were voting, Netanyahu warned that Israel's Arab citizens were flooding to the polls, and that threatened to bring in a far-left government. He also pledged that there will be no Palestinian state if he's elected, bringing charges from some on the left that Netanyahu ran a divisive and even racist campaign in order to hold on to power. Netanyahu has come out on top, but the hard work is still ahead of actually forming a coalition. He'll now work to bring some of the smaller parties elected last night on board, but he admits that could take up to two to three weeks. Derek Stoffel, CBC News, Jerusalem. The U.S. Army could begin destroying its last remaining stockpile of chemical weapons as early as today. The Defense Part, uh, de Department, I should say, has given the go-ahead to start eliminating 2,500 tons of mustard gas at a chemical depot in southern Colorado. Over the last decade, the U.S. has destroyed 90% of its chemical weapons arsenal. Finally, a stretch of busy highway 401 between Toronto and Montreal has been closed, most of mostly closed since last night following a multiple vehicle pileup. As many as 50 vehicles, some of them semi-trucks, were involved in the incident near Trenton. Police say four people were taken to hospital. 40,000 liters of oil were spilled onto frozen ground away from waterways. Authorities did finally reopen one westbound lane to traffic this morning. And that is the CBC News. I'm Centaurus Serves. This is Elijah Hildegarden. Please note we've moved from the outdoors to an indoor oasis of harmony downtown. As you can tell, I'm having a hard time containing my excitement. Thank you, and have a beautiful day. Namaste. Your business is constantly evolving. That's why Monero's offers payment solutions that are right for you today and tomorrow. Switch now and enjoy a gift worth up to $500. Call 1-800-MONERA or visit Monero.com for details. New to CBC Radio 2 this fall. Three jury masterpieces of classical music take center stage with Catherine Duncan. From Brahms Symphony No. 1 to Ravel's Piano Concerto in G Major. Experience the great works of the classical world performed in their entirety. Center stage, Saturday at noon, 1 p.m. Atlantic, 1.30 in Newfoundland on CBC Radio 2. You're listening to the best in classical music. Tempo with Chiumi Nebrala on CBC Radio 2. It's the morning after the night before for pianist 
the Lung Lung, and not because he was out on the town drinking pints of Guinness in a t-shirt that says, Dick me I'm Irish. Yesterday, Lung Lung performed in Vancouver, where he was joined on stage by 100 student pianists in a Piano Extravaganza. Hmm, maybe, on second thought, they did drag him out on the town to drink green beer after the show. Well, here's hoping Lung Lung had a chance to get some rest, whatever he did last night, because he performed again tonight in Vancouver to play Mozart's piano concerto number 17, and the concert is already sold out. So here's